Here we go. And we will, they will leave me their, their PowerPoint, we'll put it, on, put it online, okay? Okay. So, um, the first choice of note taking is like outlining keywords. So like when you read, look for bold, italicized, or underlined words, and then write a brief definition of it. And then in class, uh, when the key terms that the teachers are sh like stress or repeat. So, yeah. Okay, clustering is like making a web that you have your main topic and then you kind of branch out to your sub type, like your sub points that you think are key and then you go into a little more detail off them. Um, a shorthand is basically summarizing so that like when you read long chapters just like section off like sections and then summarize what you read and then in class when the teacher talks too fast just like get the general idea of it and then you can always go back and like look in the book or something to find more detail. Um, the pronoun system is like, you do your normal note taking on the one part, and then at the bottom a little bit, you'll summarize basically everything that you just said, it's just a little bit, so that way you don't have to reread all of your notes, and it helps you remember what you took during class. And then the Q column is like, kind of some key points that you had um, that you put over there, so that way you like, um, it like, it's kind of like Jeopardy that you have like your answers to questions on that side. Those are the four main ideas of that we got. It was quite concise. So, yep. You want to just, uh, just uh, drag that onto the desktop. Okay, yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. There you go. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Good question. Does anybody have a type of note taking that they use that they think it works well? <laughs> anybody? Note taking that you think works well? When we did the we did the Cornell notes for one of my classes and we had to have like ten every week, but we would instead of writing like key terms or whatever on the corner, we would write um, questions uh -huh. to remind ourselves and we could review ourselves on our own notes. Right, right. It worked really well. Right. Anybody else have a system that they've used? I kind of use like an outline of what's being said. Just do general outline. Okay, oh. general outline. Anybody else? Anybody else? System that you use for note taking? A system that I use for note taking? Yes. Q. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I always listen and okay. I always ask questions. <laughs> listen and ask questions. I ask questions to slow the speaker down. Okay. That's what I do. Okay. Get a chance to take the notes. <laughs> Cece, you take notes. What's your system? Um, I do kind of an outline, like main points and then little okay. dots more and facts. Yes. And it does work. It does. Okay. Anybody else? Anybody else? Okay. I, I had meant to bring today, but I will bring next Tuesday. Instead, um, I have I have my notebook still from a couple of notebooks from when I was an undergraduate. I was a lousy note taker. I'll bring those in and show you bad note taking. Okay, I want to talk about why we take notes, and I also want to talk about the critical question: What evidence is there that this works? Oh, and I have papers to give back. So, why take notes? Why take notes? Some of you never do take notes. How many of you do not take notes? How many of you do not take notes? Or rarely take notes? She is paper. <laughs> okay. Not notes or, or rarely notes. Why take notes? <clears throat> well, one of, the, one of the things we've been told, and I learned this from a woman by the name of Sandra Gibson, who was essentially uh, the Tom Clawson of uh, Georgia, uh, the University of Georgia. Uh, and Gibson talked about brain and memory studies. And what she found was that systematic note taking moved issues from your short term memory to your long term memory. 
And if you are a systematic note taker, you have much less to study when it comes time for the test. If you do not take notes, the tendency is going to be that you will forget 80% of what you heard. If you do take notes and review your notes, you will recall 80% of what you heard. It's called the 80-20 learning. Because what you're doing, now she was not just saying take notes in class, but what you're doing when you take notes and review them is you're moving them from your short-term memory to your long-term memory. Things in your short-term memory may last there between 15 minutes and an hour. And if you don't move them to your long-term memory, you forget them. And therefore, when you come time to study, when it comes time to study for exams, you spend a lot more time cramming and trying to get back that 80% that you have forgotten. Now, what did Gibson mean by a systematic note taker? Well, you can use any system. And she advocated a keyword note taking system. And I think that that's a pretty good one because I'm going to ask you to write a keyword outline for your speech, as well as writing a preparation outline for your speech. Keyword note taking means that you, you listen for those key places. For example, I told you this morning, we're going to look at barriers, we're going to look at notes, we're going to look at a speech and take notes on it. Okay? That's what we're going to do today. So if I were preparing a sheet, I might even take three sheets and look at, title the first one, barriers, the second one, the second one, notes, and the third one, speech, so that I systematically line up my notes. Now, <clears throat> what, what Gibson found was that if you, if you type, no, she didn't find this, but others have found, if you type your notes in class, like Colton's got his laptop, and he may be typing his notes. Are you typing your notes? No. Okay. <laughs> if you type your notes in class, that you have a tendency then to remember less than if you write your notes and type up a summary afterwards. And I want you all to know that one of the, one of the greatest things for your learning is a site called Evernote. If you sign up for Evernote, you can share class notes with other people in your class. There is nothing wrong with that. The game here, the goal here, is that you learn something. The assessments are only here to see, have you done it? That's why I give quizzes, is to see, have you done it? I, want to, I, I use both a carrot and a stick to get you to do stuff, but I want to see if you've done it. So, so the quiz is, is more to find out, have, have you read, which is to encourage you to read, and have you read in a way that is systematic so that you do recall. I don't expect you to recall perfectly, that's why the, it's open book. Right? I do expect you to apply in your writing, and that's, that's part of integrating what we do. Okay? So first, write. Cornell system is a great system, and I've always learned that, that this column over here in Cornell is for questions that you think you're going to be asked on the quiz. What's your most difficult course? What's your most difficult course? CC? This, this one? Okay. Well, you've got an easy schedule then. Yeah. Jeremiah, what's your most difficult course? Business ethics. Business ethics. Mike, what's your most difficult course? Hmm? Stats. Stats. Okay. Um, history. Why is history difficult? Because he doesn't put the PowerPoints up and he just talks, so you don't know exactly what to write down. Okay. <laughs> Professor Kaler just has... Oh, no. God, that was awful. Um, Ferguson. Professor Ferguson has, has a tendency just to, to talk and not put up PowerPoints. Have you, asked for, have you asked for the PowerPoints? I think he even has his PowerPoints on his computer. 
don't think he. I think Cause he no, because he's he flipping reads through off things. His computer. Yeah. Like yeah. He, he looks at his computer and he'll say key, like he'll remind himself of the keynotes he wants to say. Right. And so and I usually just whenever he comes back and he says the main thing that he's going to say, I write that down. And then okay, down there you go. And then I write down yeah. what he says. Yeah. Yeah. Watch, yeah. watch carefully, because don't try to get everything. Don't try to get everything. Yeah. Mike, why is stats tough? Even people who do like math find stats tough. Why is stats tough? Why is stats tough? So much different than math that you've been taught previously. Yeah, the, it, there, you've not done anything like it. It's not like algebra. It's certainly not like geometry. It, it, this is a whole new way of thinking. Now, are you doing stats for the social sciences or are you doing regular stats? That's okay. That's a better stats course because it's it's more linked to practical stuff. It's more linked to the kind of stuff we looked at. Jeremiah, what was your course again? Business ethics. Business ethics. Why is business ethics tough? Uh, some of the terms that we learn are kind of confusing, and there's a lot to do for the class. There's a lot of material. Excuse me. I'm trying to keep my nose from. <laughs> ending up in my throat. I don't want to end up hacking. There's a lot of material. Uh, that'll look so nice, a little plop on my face. Kind of young. Um, and, and the terms in, in ethics are difficult because you may get something like the Kantian imperative. Or you may, they may talk about deontology. Or they may talk about virtue ethics or all, all kinds of things that you just don't have a way of connecting. Well, how do you handle those kinds of things? James, how do you handle the kind of stuff where you have no way of connecting this yet? You've got lots of odd terms. Okay, you can go talk. you got to note those odd terms. got to note them. You've got to take notes in a class where you're having trouble. You've got to, your toughest class especially, you've got to have a good, solid note-taking system. Good, solid note-taking system. You've got to do it. And you, the best ones are Cornell and, and uh, uh, Keyword just because they are so simple to master. The cluster is lots and lots of fun. And there are some mind mapping tools. If you haven't tried mind mapping, mind mapping is a, is a hoot. It's a lot of fun to do. I don't find it useful as a, way, as a uh, tool for recalling, a tool for memory. Okay. So what I want you to do now is I want you to at least try, even if you're not a note taker otherwise, get out a sheet of paper, try either a Cornell system or a keyword system as we watch this speech. So what are you going to do with this information? Well, you have, you have at my request, you have taken notes. What I would also request now, we're going to take a test on this next Tuesday. And this is a test to see whether your comprehension has improved um, and whether or not note-taking will help. I expect that everybody will get 10 on this, on this quiz. We'll take it in an in-class test all at the same time. If you, have, if you are not in class today, and I'm talking to people through the video, if you're not in class today, this, this uh, speech, you want the online security final. It will be on reserve in the library. You can watch it in the library. Now, those of you who are here or those of you who watch us in the library, what I would want you to do is one of two things. Either take your handwritten notes and sometime within the next five hours, type them into a Microsoft Word document. Or agree with me, covenant with me, Make a commitment to me that you will, once a day, from here until next Tuesday morning, get out your notes and look over them. And I don't mean just take the whole sheet and go, okay, there's my notes. But actually go through your notes, just once a day. 
It should take you no more than three minutes. This is a seven minute speech. <coughs> On Tuesday morning, the first thing that we'll do when Stephen gets to class, the first thing we'll do in class is we'll take a paper test on this. And as I say, I think we can score a perfect score. I think we can score 10 out of 10 on this, because it's not a hard, hard comprehension. And he was really well organized. By the way, that, that should be the model of your organization of your informative speech. That's the way I'd like you to do it. Um, but come in. You're going to, with your notes, do it from memory, take the quiz. Then we're going to put this aside for a couple of weeks. And as proof that note taking helps move it into your long term memory, I'm going to spring a day on you where we'll just go over to the computer lab and we'll do another version of this online. And what you'll find is if you've been successful in the notes and successful in the review, is that even without a review, in two weeks you'll have good recall and you should score at least an eight. I think we can be perfect both times, but that's just me. Now, uh, paper three on writing prompt three is due tonight. The uh, quiz on listening is due tonight. I got your, I got your paper too. Got your paper too. Uh, the quiz on listening, I'm going to close just briefly right after this class, and then we'll come back to it. Uh, your paper three, I am a little bit behind in reviews because of illness. I'm going to get caught up this weekend, and I'm going to try to get even paper three. We will review paper three as well as take that quiz on Tuesday. So make sure you've got paper three with you on Tuesday. B, uh, I appreciate your reviewer sheets. Be a little more critical with each other. Uh, now, I don't mean criticize. I mean, be, be a little more careful. You might even, when we do the review, it might become a little cacophonous in here where you read out loud sections. Because I've seen people say, I got everything. Sentences are very clear. I got everything. I didn't have any place where I don't, didn't know what they meant. And then I'm looking at, I'm reading the paper and I'm going, yeah, I don't know what you mean here. And I think if you'll read out loud, you'll, you'll hear some of the problems that you're making for yourself. So we'll do a, a more, a, maybe a more structured review in class next time. We'll do the quiz, we'll do structured review, and then we're going to go on in the textbook. This, continue, this is the end of our chapter three listening. We're going to go on in the textbook to chapter four, which is communicating verbally. Verbal messages. Verbal messages. Bring me your favorite catchphrase from Dick Vitale. What? What's your favorite Dick Vitale phrase? Favorite Dick Vitale phrase? Go, <laughs> baby! Boom goes the dynamite. No, that was not Dick Vitale. All right. So let me give these back before you get out of here. Caden. Thank you, Brad. Colton. Caitlin. Hey, Alan. Mike Vaughn. You got him, folks. Thank you, His cousin and I hate him. Thank you. Tony. And, uh, you got this. You know what I'm saying? Bye, bye. Pinky. <coughs> Jeremiah. Can you take melodies to her, Emily? Um, I can. Okay. What's up, Thank you. Yeah, ten to two. We have three home runs left. When's the next game, ladies? Uh,